Now I'm not sure why you came to this video. If this title offends you, you might have come. If this title interests you, obviously you're here. And, um, and you might feel strongly one way or the other and that's why you're here. I'm standing next to a honeysuckle bush right here. And uh, this is a common bush that I see on landowner properties. And I wanna add in autumn olive as well. Autumn olive for decades. I've been on online and on various hunting forums and boy, it can bring, bring up some hot discussion for autumn olive and especially honeysuckle too over in some parts. And there's that uh, idea that you eradicate it all. And there's the other idea that it's here to stay and use it, learn how to manipulate it. And I'm more towards that end. Bottom line, the two are very hard to argue for wildlife value. And I'm gonna start off with a story that uh, really ticks me off. And this is one of the most, it's about the angriest you'll see me get in one of these videos. Um, and I get sick of this. I'm, I'm pretty upset about the story. This happened probably 15 years ago in the state of Michigan. Um, you have an autumn olive field. Landowner thinks autumn olive, bad. Kind of a cave mentality. Autumn olive, bad, get rid of. So you just get rid of it without thinking, using your brain. So what happens in this case, 10 acres, autumn olive. Can you imagine the wildlife that was there? Because it's one of the best wildlife species in the state of Michigan. And it's for nesting birds, pheasants, rabbits, and whitetails. Lots of wildlife relate to this because it's great cover. Deer don't eat it, so it actually lives, can form a thicket. You know, you can make a case of red osier dogwood's better, but if you plant that field in red osier dogwood and they eat it down to the dirt and there's nothing there, what good is it? So red osier is better, but autumn olive, so state of Michigan program on that 10 acre field, they get rid of the 10 acres of autumn olive, kill all the wildlife that's there, because that's the only sustainable cover in that location. Where do the wildlife go? They get caught on, they get hit on the road, they look for shrubs and bushes around people's homes to live in, and they simply just die because there's no sustainable cover. Birds, nesting birds that come back to those locations, it's not there. Maybe they find another place, maybe they don't, but a lot of small game displaces buck bedding, whitetail buck bedding, fawns, does, whatever's using that entire area, gone. They replace it with uh, hardwood tree tubes, five to 600 tree tubes of hardwoods per acre. Five years later, there's not a hardwood left. Deer knock them over, they eat the hardwoods, no cover. It's a basically an empty field. You know, in my terms, I, I look at it simple too. Maybe that cave mentality, but you know, see autumn olive, remove autumn olive, destroy wildlife population. You should go to jail for that. Be fined heavily, not receive an award, not receive a grant from the state. So that's about the anger you'll get me see, you'll see me, because I, I love wildlife. I could care less what them, someone thinks about an invasive like that. It's really not spreading. It's not gonna spread as much as, it, as people think, and we'll talk about that in a second. But if you've done that and you've displaced wildlife and you're looking at an empty field five years later, you don't need a pat on the back. You didn't do anything good. So a lot of this, a lot of anything, you know, it's invasive because it wasn't here. That doesn't mean it's bad. And as it relates to the rest of the habitat in the area, autumn olive, honeysuckle is a good example. It's not a forestry uh, practice. It's not a timber species tree. It's not a dollar tree. So you have a huge segment, a conserv quote conservation wildlife biologist conservation. Not all of them, certainly. There's a bunch of great wildlife managers out there. Um, Dylan has a wildlife management degree from Stevens Point here in Wisconsin. He is obviously not of this ilk where you're just looking at sea dollars in the forest, sea timber producing trees, and that's what you should manage your land for. It's not good habitat for wildlife unless it produces timber value. And unfortunately, there's a huge mentality out there about that. If it's not a hard maple, if it's not an oak, if it's not a big veneer cherry, if it's not walnut, it's not good for wildlife, right? Actually, the opposite is true. And Autumn Olive gets that idea, that those misinformation spread out there that's gonna take over a field. It's gonna take over a hardwood stand. Heck, when, when Autumn Olive gets shaded out, it dies. It needs full sunlight. So it's not gonna ever take over hardwoods. Hardwoods are just slightly taller than a 10 to 12 foot high mature Autumn Olive bush. Honeysuckle, not a timber species tree, not a boards per foot tree, so bad. Couldn't be further from the truth. Honeysuckle, I've watched deer in November sit here and pick on these leaves right here for an hour. One deer just sit here and eat autumn, or, uh, honeysuckle leaves on the ground, on the bush, just sit there and eat. It's an important browse species for leaf. It goes back to, yes, it's not something you're gonna harvest for timber. That doesn't mean it's a bad tree or bush. Box elder is native, but box elders also remove the box elder. It's the same focus because it's not a boards per foot dollar tree so remove it it must be bad it couldn't be further from the truth so a lot of this 
if between quote invasives that are bad for the environment, bad for wildlife, bad for habitat, is really just dollar related and that couldn't be more wrong. You know, in, in most of these cases, <clears throat> the reason that honeysuckle's there, the reason especially that autumn olive is there, is because the deer don't browse on it. Um, autumn olive is not a browse tree, it's a cover tree. And it's also food for nesting birds and uh, pheasants. Gr again, great rabbit cover, uh, fawn cover, white tail holding cover, bedding cover. The reason a lot of that autumn olive is there is because nothing else would grow in its place. Hardwoods wouldn't regenerate in those locations, not because of the autumn olive, but because of the poor soil and because of deer numbers. So there's a lot of areas in Michigan, for example, that have autumn olive. Autumn olive became established because everything else the deer ate, and now they at least have that cover. If they didn't have the autumn olive, you tell me what's left in its place. You can plant and cage shrubs. You can plant and cage trees, often with limited success in those locations. Put conifers there, but conifers actually offer less than the autumn olive in the first place as far as it relates to wildlife. The autumn olive are always on the neighbors. If they don't remove them, they don't remove them over here. When a bird comes over, sits on a branch and poops, you have an autumn olive tree as long as it's a sunny area. It spits out those seeds, you have autumn olive. So you can get rid of it on your property, it's gonna come back. And when it does come back, it's high value wildlife cover. Again, great cover with its honeysuckle that rabbits depend on, pheasants depend on. Same with autumn olive, deer, nesting birds, so incredible. There's a, there's a nest right over here in, in, a, in a honeysuckle bush, but outstanding wildlife cover. It's not a money tree, so it gets a bad rap. When a lot of other things that are native take over a lot more in an open field. And I'll give you an example, just a row of spruce. Spruce. You ever see on the row of spruce, as it extends out into an open field, you get 50 yards away, the spruce are six inches tall. When you get 20 yards away, the spruce are six feet tall. And when you get 10 yards away, they're 15 feet tall. And then you have the mature timber. It just goes right down because it keeps invading on that space, allowing nothing to grow. The spruce are an awesome smother crop for any other wildlife species, shrubs, bushes, herbaceous plants, broadleafs, trees, bushes, it doesn't really matter. And that's native though, so that's okay. And I understand that. I, I understand you don't want to introduce this if you don't already have it. I'm not, I, I've never made a recommendation that you should call up Cold Stream Farms in Michigan where it might be readily available or somewhere else and order it to put it on your land. Again, you're just in spreading and invasive. About 10 years ago, <clears throat> maybe eight years ago, I was very blessed to publish an art article about one of my original concepts, which is about the four bedding habitats for whitetails. What I recognize being in the woods with, on hundreds of clients and uh, hunting on, on my own, different habitats, public, private land, all different kinds of areas, north to south, big woods to small woods, big ag, was there are four bedding concepts, four bedding types for whitetails. First one, briars, weeds, briars. Second one, shrubs, woody shrub bushes. Third one, hard, hardwood regeneration, and fourth one, conifers. And no particular order of importance other than hardwood re regeneration. You need that browse in those bedding areas. But that's what I recognize, those four locations. So I was blessed to be able to write an article and contribute it to a certain magazine. And I won't even talk about what magazine that was. Um, it's not really important. But I was met with that caveman mentality where we talk about autumn olive as one of those shrubs. And being a Michigander, you know, lived there 42 years. I saw autumn olive all the time. And, and, and especially as it came down to, if they didn't have that autumn olive, they wouldn't have habitat. Deer ate it all. But having that autumn olive, that was something that they can actually use. And so my whole idea for writing, for writing on my site, for writing, for uh, creating the videos, is I don't want to have anyone tell me that I can't help somebody. That's why I don't submit a lot of articles to national publications, because they're not going to tell me that I can't help you by giving you good information that you can use your head with and think for yourself. I want this information readily available. I don't want it controlled in any way. So that's why I control my information and that free flow of information to you as much as I can. I wrote the article, I described each area of whitetail bedding and the editor came back and said, great article, we're gonna publish it, but, but <laughs> we need you to get rid of the, autumn, the part about the autumn olive. The basically the part about helping folks that have autumn olive, helping wildlife in those locations continue to be there, and how to manipulate that habitat by creating openings and pockets within to move deer, 
to also continue to, to hold the wildlife species that were there, to not destroy those wildlife populations. We want you to take all that out of there. We don't want you to help people by telling them how to do that. And that was, you know, again, I'm not a PC type person. If I see it's gonna help somebody, and I see there's not a lot of other options in that location, then I'm gonna talk about it, I'm gonna write about it, and that's why we're creating this video right now because this is an important, obviously passionate uh, topic that I am very familiar with, and I just wanna help you guys out there. Thankfully, throughout the years, there's still that caveman mentality holding on in certain uh, factions. What I'm seeing is that state and wildlife agencies are taking a turn to where they're recognizing that they love wildlife, the landowner's goal is wildlife, and they're looking at it that if they remove, and I've had landowners literally go to a federal administrator of a plan, go in and say, if I remove this autumn olive in this portion of my property, I'm going to lose wildlife. This is the main portion where I found deer bedding. This is the main portion where I see rabbits or pheasants really have holding cover for the entire winter. This is where I see the most wildlife activity, not just talking whitetails, but wildlife activity on my property. And oh, by the way, you've helped me plant tens of thousands of shrubs and trees on the land, and the deer ate them all down to nothing, and, uh, and this is what's left over. So thankfully, very thankfully, I'm seeing that turn after really visiting almost a thousand clients in 26 states. Actually, I've never been to North Dakota. I'm going to be there in the end of February. A great time to go to North Dakota, right? <laughs> so I'll be there on a client property uh, soon here, just a couple weeks. <clears throat> and that'll be that 27th state that I've worked in for whitetails. But in seeing that and the experience I have in working with plant administrators, foresters, state wildlife agencies, and federal, I'm starting to see that turn towards the acceptance that it's not a matter of if you can't beat them, you you know, join them. It's more a matter of this really isn't doing the damage that we once thought. We really can't eliminate it 100%. It really does hold true wildlife populations. This is a benefit to landowners. Yes, it's not a money tree, but these landowners didn't buy their, their woods to plant a bunch of hardwoods and manage timber in 30 years. In the end, I'm not saying, again, to go out and plant this stuff, to order it from Coldstream Farms in Michigan or wherever it might be readily available. I've never even given a recommendation to clients to do that in writing or verbal. What I am saying is your neighbor has it over here, your neighbor has it over here, there, you probably won't be able to get rid of it. And if you do get rid of it, what else is going to be there in its place? If you're getting rid of thickets like that and you're destroying wildlife populations, what a shame. Learn to use it. Learn that this bush honeysuckle right here. Um, there's even a couple native species. You know, a lot of times we're talking about Japanese, a titarian honeysuckle, and that's invasive down in the southern areas. And so people expand that up to the north. I think sometimes uh, foresters give it a bad rap because they know that they can attach honeysuckle, you know, buzzword with titarian honeysuckle, Japanese honeysuckle that's invasive in the south. And people get that impression up here. And again, it's not a money tree, so they can carry that that opinion and they can carry that uh, focus forward when really um, it's not helping landowners at all especially with their wildlife goals and learn to use it you know this you can cut out you can create passageways for deer very easily through it deer can browse on the way it's great for uh, rabbits great for uh, escape cover for pheasants great for nesting birds autumn olive or honeysuckle and there's a lot of ways you can use it instead of destroying it and when you destroy it always consider what is gonna grow in this place. It's one thing if you're putting a food plot in and that relates to the rest of your property. It's another thing you think you might need the thermal protection of conifers on there, but think about those nesting birds and those berries and the small game that relate to those bushes that wouldn't relate to that conifer. Same with whitetails. Conifers are probably the most limiting whitetail cover, especially as a whole um, in the whitetail woods. Understand that it might not be as bad as people think. Understand that a lot of the focus and negativity that surrounds a lot of these invasives has to do with, including like box elder that's native, it gets a bad rap simply because it's not a money tree. And, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about all foresters are like this or all wildlife biologists. Again, D Dylan right here is a wildlife management degree and that's his background. Um, there's so many awesome people out there, but really there's a lot that really are one focused on money and money timber and I want you to have wildlife. If you're watching this and you want to grow trees, this is probably not the channel for you. 
I'm more about whitetails and wildlife, my love of wildlife, my love of the outdoors, and true diversity in the woods, not just a bunch of hardwood maple that's sitting in a federal stand up along Lake Superior. Not my thing. Cool to go visit, but I don't want it on my property. Actually, I'll take this over a hard maple, hard cherry, any day of the week.